Hi there, Bob here. On today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be diving into mesh tools and we're going to be using it to create some nice greeble detail to low poly models. So let's fire up Cinema 4D. We'll start the clock and get started. In our scene, we have a default primitive plane, and this is what we're going to use to create a detailed piece of procedural geometry. So we'll go to the Insidium tab, Mesh Tools. We're going to bring in a Mesh Tools subdivider. So with the Mesh Tools uh, system, all you do is you make your geometry a child of the Mesh Tools object, and then you can make procedural adjustments. So the Mesh Tools subdivider, it has offered one layer of subdivisions there. If we go to the settings, look, we can increase the subdivisions. We can make this a really dense mesh. Let's put it on five. So we've got loads of polys to play with. But what we want to do is isolate the effects of this subdivider. We don't want it evenly across our plane. So let's go and use. We could use a material to drive this. We could use a selection tag, a vertex map, a field. But we're going to use a shader. So let's go to this shader pull down. Let's bring in a noise. And now you can see, look, immediately our Cinema 4D noise is driving where that is getting subdivided. Let's go to this thumbnail so we can change the noise and we'll pick, let's pick a Luca noise. And we're going to add a little bit of, look, if we reduce this high clip, we're going to get more of that noise. So I would think this needs to be scaled up a little bit. It's a little bit too small, that noise. Let's go to the global scale and put it on maybe 300. Yep, that's looking good. So now we've got some really nice variation in our mesh of where it's subdivided. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do another tool to procedurally adjust this now subdivided plane. Let's go to Insidium, Mesh Tools. We're going to bring in our Mesh Tools inset. Let's bring it in. Now, before we drop in the subdivider, I'm just going to take my plane out. So now it's just the default plane. Let's stick it in the inset just so we can see what the effects of this object are on its own. So we'll go to the inset, to the object tab, and if I increase the amount here, if you look at those polys, you'll see that we get this. Now, you might know this as an inner extrude. That's what Cinema 4D used to call this. But this is an inset, and you can think of it almost as this inner face is the original face, and we've got these four new faces surrounding it. But we can do more. Look, I mean, we can add variation for a start, so they're all of different sizes. And we can offset it. So this is almost ex like extruding it up, look. So now we've got some height in those. We can offer variation on those um, offsets as well. And we can also twist the inner face. But to twist it, it works better if we have a little bit of geometry on these new polys here. So to add that, we just go to divisions and let's put in, you can see them appearing, look, let's just put six. And now if we add a bit of twist, you can see, look, it twists those inner faces and we can add variation on that twist as well. So they're all twisted slightly differently. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Right, so let's take our plane out of the inset. Let's stick it back in the subdivider to get that cool, irregular subdivision uh, pattern. And then let's put the subdivider in the inset. And now the inset is creating those insets on those subdivided polygons. And all of a sudden, look, we've got this fantastic looking detail to this scene. And this is all procedural. Look, let's say we want to change the look of the noise. We can click on the noise again in the subdivider. And let's just change the seed. And look, we can just keep going through until we've got something that we're happy with. So something like that's looking pretty cool to my eye. Excellent. Now let's isolate the effects of our Mesh Tools inset. So instead of using a shader like we did with the subdivider, let's use a field. So we'll go to the Fields tab. And we'll bring in, let's bring in a, a spherical field. And now look, you can see what's happening. Only the polygons that are within the spherical field are being affected by um, the uh, inset. They're all being subdivided still, but only the ones inside the field are being inset. We can go to that spherical field. Let's go to the remapping. And instead of it being linear, look, if we come to the bottom, we can change this contour mode to curve. And it'll just smoothen out this transition here a bit. So just finally, let's have a look at our inset 
advanced tab when you're using fields you can dictate which values are affected by the field by default all of them are the twist the offset and the inset but look if we take off the inset now all of our polygons have been inset all of the time across our plane and the spherical field is only affecting how they're being kind of extruded up the offset and how they are being twisted let's go back to our inset reactivate that so now they're only being inset when they are within the um the bounds of our field so that is the amazing power of insidium mesh tools procedurally modeling and animating geo.